I'd like to welcome everybody to our weekly look back on Clover on the uh, Senior Hurling Championship Games of last weekend. And I look forward to this weekend's games, which are round three, the final round before we go into the preliminary quarter finals. Now with me this afternoon again, I've got John O'Dowd, freelance uh, reporter and uh, Gaelic Games and other sports, uh, works mainly for the Kerryman. Um, next in line, we have the um, Enfant Terrible of the panel. Uh, that is James McCarthy from Kilmiley. James has eight county championship medals he keeps boasting of. He doesn't have a county intermediate one, I don't think. Uh, Ian Brick does. And he doesn't play cricket, but no. Ian Brick does. <laughs> and uh, and then, the <laughs> yes, so he's the replacement on the panel this week. And uh, our third member of the panel is the young gun himself. He calls a spade a spade and he loves uh, the draw. I'm banking <laughs> on him to have a Good evening of incisive analysis, and that's the man from Abidorne, uh, who once walked away from the press, but now is one of them. That's Aidan Leahy. You're all wel very welcome, gentlemen. And I must start this evening, I suppose, on a sad note, um, and that's regarding uh, the uh, death of um, a young uh, farmer, uh, Kilmiley Hurler, John Paul O'Mahony. Um, he was a lovely young man, uh, very well got, very well liked. Nobody had a bad word to say about him. Um, he played uh, hurling with Kilmiley. He won a county championship minor in 2009. And then he played in the 2014 final as well. He got time in the 2015 when they won the title and 2016. And uh, then he went travelling uh, shortly after that and uh, he went uh, to a number of places and he ended up in San Francisco. Unfortunately, he met with a serious accident a couple of weeks ago and uh, he passed towards the end of last week. Um, a lot. Of, he was a very, very tenacious cornerback. Took no prisoners in the field, but once the game was over, the game was over. Um, Anybody you talked to about him, he, everybody was fond of him. Um, he was just, uh, somebody, dis uh, somebody described him today as just uh, a wonderful young man. And he proved that even after he passing because he donated his organs and that would prolong life for somebody else. So a special young man um, and he'd be severely missed by everybody. And he is uh, actually... Uh, going to church on Friday evening and he'd been in turn buried on Saturday. So I suppose um, all we can do here on Clover is uh, sympathise with the family, uh, with all his comrades. He played with Coleman Savage, with the Fistels, Paddy O'Connor, all those lads uh, back in the day, uh, Sean Dowling. And they're all very sad now to be saying goodbye to their, their great friend. Uh, but uh, he lit up the world while he was around and uh, at this stage. I suppose all we can say is if you live in the hearts of, of those, um, when you die, if you live in the hearts of those you leave behind, well, you don't really die. So hopefully uh, his memory will live on and uh, we will give the family uh, and his w a wide uh, community of friends in Kilmiley a chance to grieve and uh, to pay their respects to him um, in, the, in the weeks ahead. And uh, one man who obviously uh, played with him uh, is here with us, James. Um, very sad occasion. Uh, this, it's, it's black cloud over the community for last week, Martin. You know, it's, it's, you, you remember the, the interview with Simon McNaughton? He talked about teammates mm -hmm. on the GA team. He talked about how you spend your life with them and how you, you socialise with them. You get married near the same time as them. And he said, ultimately, they're the fellas who will carry you to your grave. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that's what our lads will do on Friday evening. Hurling is a very small part of that now at the minute. Mm -hmm. We're just, we're such a tight community. We're so, the community is so small, the club is so small. Everyone knows each other. And the families, the Mahoney family, and of course, the young family, steeped in Kimali hurling, like, and just, like John Paul, I play with him, like, and 
the sad thing about it is he was a young supporter when we won our first one. And I had pictures at home of him as a young lad. A tiny little lad, big blonde hair and big blue eyes. And you remember him as that. And then you actually come to play with these guys years later. And he's just even just hopping off them. And they, they said, geez, I remember you when you were playing when you were young. And I remember him when they were small young lads. And it's just, it's just heartbreaking, Mort. Heartbreaking. Yeah. It's just everyone in the club has felt to it. Everyone in the, the community has felt it. And everyone that knows him. Really, we are hearts are broken, like for the whole family, the Youngs and the Mahonies. We send them all our best, and we won't leave them on their own. That's our community. We'll stick together, and we'll be there for them when they're. They'll be long months ahead. It's raw now, but there will be tougher times ahead as well, and we wish them all our best. Yeah, thanks, James. I suppose the, I read something today that summed him up: young, loving, and beloved, though cruel debt. Why could you not spare our treasure, who was John Paul, for? A little while longer. May he rest in peace. We also remember today, of course, uh, Michal O'Mahertig, who died at a very good age, John of uh, 93, but he was the voice of uh, Gaelic games, particularly hurling. I really thought that he, he painted such a picture of uh, Munster finals and, 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 and games like that, and, and of course his phrases about the fox and the rabbit and, 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 and uh, you know, Sean O'Go helping and, uh, you know, we come Utah, but we come, and I come from Glimba, not hurling strongholds, as Michal said back in the day, but he added colour, a picture, he was, he was unreal. Um, Memories of him, quickly? Uh, without a doubt, what a, an absolute legend. You know, as someone put it yesterday, um, he was not alone an ambassador for Kerry, but he was an ambassador for Ireland and for all things Irish. Like, he, the, the culture of Ireland was just as important to him as Gaelic games, you know. He had a big, huge interest in the Irish language, but it was his unique style as a commentator that set him out from everybody else. Like, like obviously, time goes on. There were commentators before Michal. There will be commentators after Michal. But there will never be another Michal because yeah. he was just uh, special in his own way. And no one would even attempt now to try and recreate some of what he did because it was simply unique to that man. And the thing about him was no airs and graces whatsoever. You'd meet him in Croke Park on the day of an All-Ireland final. Yeah. And uh, he, never, he never came across as anything other than down-to-earth um, never thought of himself as being the me Hollomer Hertig that he was, mm -hmm. which probably made him an even nicer person to know than that. No, we, yeah. we may may all his family get a, a, as as much support like the O'Mahony family now. It, it, they're two different, they're two different ages, yeah. two different set of circumstances, but debt is debt for yeah. the families involved, and uh, it's going to be a difficult time for all, but. Um, like James said, the hurling community, the Kerry sporting community, they will stick together because that's what happens in this county and in uh, and in other counties throughout the country. Yeah, thanks, John. Aidan, you were, I'd say, talking, I think, yesterday about your grandfather who passed away recently as well. And uh, obviously, all uh, we pass on our sympathy to all you family and, and uh, etc. But... Uh, 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 he would be a man who probably would have followed hurling and uh, with uh, with uh, both Mihalo here, I suppose, Mihalo Mahartik. Yeah, he knew he would have known Mihalo Mahartik through through the Greyhound community. Travels yeah. with him to the Irish Greyhound Awards. I think eighty four, eighty five. My grandfather won Breeder of the Year that year, and they travelled up together. So he would have would have known him fairly well back then. Um, I remember, to be fair, Mihalo Mahartik's last commentary on on RT Radio One was the Cork Down All Ireland Final in two thousand and ten. And like that, that, that was what we, we watched it on TV, but we tuned in the radio like at the same time as well because we had to yeah. listen to that. Like it was, it was iconic, like his last one. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, great words there. So now uh, we turn to the action, and we'll start with uh, the game on Friday night in the Senior Hurling Championship. And uh, we will look back at Bally Haig, uh, who met Dr. Crokes. It was Dr. Crokes' first game in, this, in the championship this year. And the final score was... ...are in possession. Here's Phelan O'Sullivan. Two points he registered last week. Played excellently. Into the big target man, Eric Walsh. Eric lays it off on a great chance from the corner for this time. On the charge. Willie Allen coming towards him. What will Phelan do? Pops it off to Michael Lean. Michael Lean will try from 40 metres. Will he get his first score? I'll take the full forward line. Here's Philip Lucid. Philip Lucid being marked by James Murphy. Pops off to Garen. Nathan Garen's on the run. Can he score? Should score. Nathan Garen goes for goal. Good save. Batted out by Dermot Quirk. Could have been a tap over point for Garen. 
Went for goal, Mark. Great stop, Dear McQuirk. Yeah, Michael Lean. Uh, uh, sorry, Michael Linehan does the rest. Yeah. Uh, now it's Dr. Croak's turn on the attack. This is a great burst. Great chance of a score. Is pressure on here and it's Tom Doyle who comes out with the ball. That's, fi- that's excellent play by Doyle. Doyle finds O'Hare again. He's going to be fouled here. He is fouled. Ref plays advantage. Can O'Hare get at his second score of the game? I think he can. That's excellent work. But to Brian O'Reardon. From the puck out, Bally Hyde, 45 metres out. O'Reardon in low to Philip Lucid. Philip will go from play here. This looks a super score from Philip Lucid. But that as well. But that's a new string to the bow for Colin Walsh. I know he takes threes, but he put that 65 over with the wind. Here's O'Hare again. Has he got another one? Yes, he has. Oh. For a while, as here comes Bally Michael Hyde Lean, very strong under that breaking ball. Excellent work by Lean. Lays it off to Tomas Gaynor. Can Gaynor get the equaliser? Yeah. Casey, Casey, he's going to get the 1 2 back from Tomas Gaynor. Here goes Casey, played very well at centre back last week. He is a man inside. He does. He sends it into him. That's big Brian O'Reardon. Can Brian get a score? Goes for goal again. What a save by Malumphy. Brian O'Reardon now to Tomas Gaynor. Gaynor playing well here. Into big Eric Walsh. Eric will try from 40 metres. Excellent. That's a good line. And then when you have uh, Colin Walsh in front of them. Tomas Gaynor sends it in from the sideline towards Eric Walsh. Walsh goes up. Great take. He's going to score again here. Will he go for goal or a point? Walsh he goes for goal. It's in the top corner. He could have settled for a point. There was no settling there from the big belly hike full forward. He smelt the net. He rattled the net. This time, dear McQuirk had no ch- Now, Conor O'Hare. He's definitely been the top performer along with his goalkeeper for Dr. Croak so far. He's fouled. He looks for the free. The ref plays advantage and says, just put it over anyway. Wide though, and Conor O'Hare has been quite accurate. Broken down well play. by Nathaniel Donsell, but Michael Lean. He's really sharp tonight. Does Lean get his score? Yes, he does. In the belly high half forward line. He lays it off to Phelan. Phelan O'Sullivan's on the run. Away from Donsell. What can he do, Phelan? He goes for a score. This will be a beauty. It is an oh. absolute beauty. Tom Doyle tries to help out his partner. Here go Croak's little snapshot. Was that O'Hare again? I think it was. All in towards Brian O'Connor. O'Connor into 113. And Michael Lean wins possession again. Off another puck out by Cormac Slattery. Lean inside, inside the full forward line. Philip Lucid, chance of a score. Gem challenge, finds Phelan O'Sullivan. Phelan O'Sullivan in low towards Lucid. This is the perfect ball for somebody like Philip Lucid. He'll turn on a sixpence. If there are sixpences anymore, maybe Mark Murphy has him. Wins a break there off Willie Allen. To back to Nathaniel Donsell. Donsell to Kevin Landers. Kevin's going to try for a score. That's a great score by Kevin Landers. Lucid. This should be a top over score, unless Belly High decide to go for the juggler. Lose it to Lean. Lean to Eric Walsh. Can he get his second goal? Eric Walsh doesn't miss, hits it. Liam O'Sullivan. Good control by O'Sullivan. Good stick work. Takes on Connor O'Hare. O'Sullivan lays it off. I think that's David O'Mahony. Is that the substitute? Trying one from long range. Intercepts well there. The Belly High centre back. He lays it out towards Eric Walsh. Michael Lean leaves it to Eric Walsh. He's going to try. Left hand strike from 45 metres, Eric Walsh. No messing again. It was going over anyway. Uh, Michael Lean there straight away. Tim Phelan O'Sullivan again. This could be another score for Phelan. It is another. He's in possession again. He's fouled. Sends it in long though to Lucid. Lucid's away this time from Mark O'Connor. Will goal. he go for goal? goal Lays it off to Garen. Nathan Garen, he'll bury this surely. Over the bar. Nathan. In towards Padre Kenny. Kenny gets his first touch. Nice play. Good play by excellent call Casey. That's great work by the sub. Casey goes through, s- slitters it low across the goal. Must be. Philip Lewis, it must be. Is a goal. It marked, but Donsell has done very well. Here's Tom Doyle taking on Cahill Casey. Good work by Doyle. He's fouled. The ref will play advantage. This would be a wonderful individual score if Tom Doyle could. Does uh, Belly Hike 226, Dr. Croaks not 16. A respectable total there from Croaks. And that means Bally High are finished in that group now and they're going to top the group on uh, four points. John, um, Bally High and Croaks. Uh, Bally High always look the most likely team, but Croaks are competitive for the first 50 minutes and never threw in the towel. Yeah, without a doubt. In the first half, you'd have to say, like, Conor O'Hare in particular for Dr. Croaks in the middle of the field was arguably the best player in the first half. Four points from play. Uh, was a uh, Tom Doyle looked dangerous um, up front and full forward when he got the opportunity. Mark Heffernan was sharp from the place balls. Uh, Michael Lenehan had his moments there around centre back. Nathaniel. 
Yeah, an Italian Donsel did a good job. Uh, mm. Cornerback, he was uh, marking. I think it was was it Philip Lewis that he was marking, mm -hmm. and they had a great battle. And um, do you know, Crokes did probably as well as they could do. Like they speaking to us beforehand, they said they were missing eight or nine of last year's team. And like for a club like that, no, no more than Tralee Parnells who are down eight or nine of the intermediate winners. They just don't have the strength in depth, Mart. So yeah. they would need every player that they could get their hands on. Obviously, Charlie Keating, the Kerry under-20 footballer, a big loss to Dr. Crokes. Um, so from their point of view, you know, they did as well as they possibly could. For Ballyhig then, it was obviously a question of carrying the momentum from the victory over Kilmoyley and building on it because they only scored five points from play against uh, Kilmoyley that night. So even though it was a great win, they knew there was huge areas impro of improvement. And I know you can say the opposition obviously wasn't as good as Kilmoyley the last night, but they did score two goals and 22 points from play the last night. And there are fellas gaining in confidence and proving to be uh, huge influences within their team. None more so, I suppose, than big Eric Walsh at uh, full forward, who has been one of the best players in the championship over the first two matches. James, uh, one of your favourite clubs other than Kilmiley, obviously, are Bally Haig. And um, what would, how would you rate him? Eric Walsh, obviously, he's a big man and you were a defender and you were used to meeting big men. Most of them used to beat you. Uh, <laughs> and, then, and then you'd beat them back. Uh, but if you were marking, how would you handle Eric Walsh? He's got a good paw. He's a big, tall man. If you were marking him, um, other than following him, what would you do? You have to, I suppose, like, look at most big men, you have to, it's timing, it's all about timing. Whenever I was marking yeah. big lads, like, you've got to get up early or get in front. Because if you sit on the ball with them, you've no hope. They're too big, too powerful. And like, Eric probably came off a good year with the Kerry 20s as well. Like, he trained with us all year with Kerry on the 20s. Yeah. And he would have had a good year there as well. Like, we had Derek Harney was there as well. So, mm -hmm. the, the belly high lads are, they're solid. They're solid. How, well, how good they'll be in the next round now, we wait and see. But the thing about it is, they're there now. For years yeah. they weren't getting there. Yeah. They were getting beaten early on. They were gone early on. They were, their year was over. They might have had they might have had two games usually. That was their that was their lot. Now there's confidence and there is there is players coming. Belly hike underage. I see what they've done. You can see it coming along. You see it in, with their cool camps because I do a lot of cool camps during the summer. And I see young lads. You watch all these young lads. You yeah. look at all the clubs. You can see Jesus. It's like they're going to be new power base. They really are. I can see what's coming underage. They mm -hmm. have a huge amount of players coming. Yeah. On not too unlike Belly Duff. The two of them, they just have so many players coming through. It's can they keep them? You can see Belly Duff's talent last weekend, 40. Poor Cosman Kilmiley went down to the last 20s. Belly Duff had 40. And there's yeah. another 40 they left go at home. So yeah. it really does come down to a numbers game. And Belly yeah. have those numbers and they will come through with good players. They could be a force. I still think the four teams in the group one are powerful teams. Yeah. They've had three good games each. They really have, and I think they're a little bit battle hardened. The other two groups, wishy washy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wishy washy yeah. to, to be truthful. Yeah. What you're getting competition wise, I don't know. Yeah. So you're really hard to gauge where you are. Kilmali, we're, we're kind of different. <laughs> I'll just say it that way. Yeah, different. We can just pull it, we, we can just pull it out because yeah. we, our team's only just coming together now. Yeah. And if we just gather ourselves a little bit, we'll be a force again. But it's just can you get it together in time? Because yeah. we will automatically go into a quarter final virtually and not disregarding the Crokes game, but we'll be in the quarter final, untried, untested. Where are we? Can we just pull a performance out then? Hopefully we can. Yeah. Uh, uh, is there any truth in the rumour that you uh, you're trying to move a boundary out there? Or for <laughs> Kilmiley, you have houses available. So if any of those promising young uh, belly high glads <laughs> can move up the road and then play with Kilmiley, because he yeah, because you don't have you don't. That is in Kilmiley Parish. Hang on, I'm trying to cut our parish in half again. <laughs> because you don't have. Um, do you have a minor team on your own? Not in a long time. We have yeah. last year, but like we. Who are you in with? Crafton, no? Oh, Christ, whoever will take us in. Anyway. <laughs> That's the way it is. We kind of we've had numerous teams in the last couple of years, and you know. It's 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 hard. Yeah. It's hard. Like I even said to, I go into the local national school, doing a bit of work with kids, and, I, and there's probably seven or eight lads in a class. And I say to them, "You must all be senior hurlers. We can't yeah. lose any of that. Any of those seven lads. Yeah. Other clubs could lose 20, 13, 14, 15 yeah. players. We can't lose one. Yeah. We can't lose any player. No player in our club can yeah. slip through the net. And we have fellas coming through. We gather one or two every year. I can see it in our underage structure. We're going to get three or four every year." Do we get a Collins? Do we get another Ronan Welsh? We do produce them like that. Do yeah. we get another Shane Brick? We do produce those lads. Yeah. And we need to keep doing that. 
For a man with four daughters, you're brave to say you're going in. Well, your contribution to Kill Miley. Well, the camogie is coming on yet. Camogie is flying. Another failure. Another failure. We'd like to congratulate them. They won the Thaler Shield Division Five at the weekend. So fair play to them. Great. Yeah, it was brilliant for them. So at least you're making some contribution to Kill Miley. Aidan, very quickly, we we got to wrap up this first game. Belly Hike, have they impressed you? And Croke, sixteen points. Is a reasonable total, you know. I mean, to win you a lot of games, yeah. uh, but obviously they conceded too much, and that was their problem in defence and numbers again, as James was talking about. Yeah, to be fair, when you when you look at as we as we look at later Parnells on Sunday, like it's it's not easy for those clubs. Like when they're playing the 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 the, the North Kerry clubs, which are you know steeped in, in tradition and stuff in the championship. Um, they're like like that. Eric Walsh definitely a threat. He's going to cause a lot of problems for defenses going forward. The only thing is, they're probably not going to be able to get the ball into him that easily. And that's kind of how you beat Billy Hyde. Really, is put the pressure on outside, stop the ball going in, and they're going to find it hard to pick up the scores they got. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Crooks uh, are playing Kilmoyley now tomorrow evening, and we'll be previewing that uh, later on at the end of of this uh, this preview and review. Um, so Ballyhigh on top of the group going well and uh, all's well uh, with Ballyhigh although there's one member of our panel who doesn't think so anyway we move <laughs> swiftly along uh, to group uh, A or group 1 it's A it's certain pa places it's 1 in other places but it's the 4 team group and we had 2 good games here on Saturday night uh, Bally Duff played Causeway and they won that by a goal 217 to 117 so we'll do that one next puck out by Stephen Murphy and it's going to fall the way of Dan Goggin Dan got five points from play last week against Crata and off he goes on a run Dan Goggin looking to open the scoring here and Dan Goggin has absolutely great interesting to see who can come away with the ball bellied off fighting to try and clear their lines but Causeway forward sticking to the task and putting serious pressure on here a foot goes in from Dan Goggin Jack Sullivan tries to get it up he couldn't it's uh, Colm Harty now who gets the ball into his hand. Harty has a look across. Can he find anything? Can he find the target? Wow. Oh, that's a superb shot. And yeah, it's out from the goals over the left hand side and over the bar while Cavanaugh is trying to hook him. So it's a great score. That was a great puck out there. Well taken by Dylan Moriarty. He's given it to Evan Boyle. Evan Boyle is looking for his first score. The trip says the referee. Neil Mangan has the ball. He looks inside here. It's Jack Goulding inside there. One on one with Sean Sheehan. Goulding has it in his hand. He goes for goal and he's found it. A great ball in, it is one on one. Goulding, like last week, is starting off to an absolute fire. Cash the turns on his right hand side. And you think about it is, go low. Three points down. Luke Rochford coming out here to collect the free from Kyle O'Connor. He's given it to Jack Sullivan, who is free as a bird. And Jack Sullivan, parish rivalry here between Causeway and Belly Duff. And there's Hurley's being flung in on uh, Joe Diggins there. And he's handed it out to Dan Goggin. Dan Goggin with a strike that is going to go between the posts. Looking cross field, Luke Rochford is all on his own. Tommy Barrett is way, way off him. Rochford with a chance to send it over the bar for a valley duff, and he does so. Absolutely brilliant. Agree, yeah. Oh, Jack Sullivan is going to win the break here. The puck out not going to Keith Carmody. And this is going to go over the bar from Jack Sullivan. Great score. And uh, the puck out taken quickly to Daniel Carroll there. Get, got through the challenge and the ball is sent up the line here now. And, oh, Jack Goulding has it in the hand here. He's lost his marker. Bangs it across. Chance for Luke Rochford for a goal. Oh, what a finish. What that a finish by Luke Rochford. a goal and a half. You won't see a better goal in club hurling this year. After you bring it. Sean Sheen should have cut the ball out, but he didn't. Goulding got it on into his hand. He knew what he wanted. He knew what he wanted the goal. A piece of pass again like last week across the goal. Rochford stretching up how he caught it and pinged it into the top right-hand corner past Murphy. Not a chance. Corner will have to look for support in the middle here. He sends a speculative ball out here. He, he just knew there would surely be somebody out there. And it is Daniel Carroll who's there. And Daniel Carroll has sent that over the bar. Fantastic. Scup the pieces. Brandon stays down. Looks like he may have picked something up there. Oh, and it was a, a kind of a late hurley going in there as well. But still a Moriarty who has the ball here. Evan Murphy stays down. Goulding, Goulding bats it down to uh, Dara Slattery. Goulding drops the shoulder. Goes for the score. And has found the score. Excellent point by Kevin. Brandon strikes it. Oh, it's a great oh. save with the foot on the line. It was Kyle O'Connor, I think, who got the save. It's still not cleared by Ballyduff. And eventually Jack Sullivan gets his hand on it. Gets it into the hand, a lovely pick-up. 
A take on two men gives the pass to Paul McGrath. McGrath was shaping up for a shot there. And it's fallen the way here now of Sean Sheehan who's trying to burst through. Sheehan looking for the hand pass. Finds Dan Goggin miraculously, I would say. And Dan Goggin puts it over the bar. And it's that's given a bit of a liftcation, Billy Lines. Oh. Wasn't ready for that at all. He did not know the ball was coming near him. He's coughed up possession. Jack Goulding on this on the run strikes it over the bar. That's a soft score can see from Cosin. Carey looks inside. And uh, nice little run there by Keith Carmody on the turn. Keith Carmody has it opened up for him. Straight away into Billy Lines. Billy Lines with a chance and Billy Lines with a goal. And that's a huge score and maybe a massive turning point in this match. It's an absolutely massive score. And that all came from Cullum Hartley. Not winning a puck on initially, but not giving up and going the whole way back. It's laterally under pressure here as he forced out over the line. The linesman says no. But two men on him and it's turned over. Here's Keith Carmody. Carmody oh. will strike off his left here. He's looking he to it. draw it in over the bar. That's a super score. That's a one. The number 27, Jack Enright. Enright finding Kevin Goulding. Goulding will go for a score. Try to use the breeze here. Wow. Kevin Goulding puts it over the bar. What a fantastic! He gets the pass to Dan Goggin. Goggin looks inside, oh, but it's only going to drop to the spare man, who's Kevin Goulding. Goulding takes the belt of his shoulder off Billy Lyons, and he'll go on a run here. He's a chance no to open up the position. shoulders, and he's going to put it over the bar. Three. Brandon Barrett. Brandon looks for support from Goggin. Goggin was the man who picked the ball off the line. He sent a long one in there. Adam White is in there. Can Keith Carmody get on the break? It's pulled away by Dylan Moriarty. Gary Carey going down there. Here's Cullum Harty. Harty, they need a point two to Causeway. Harty will have a look at the posts here. Can he get the score to bring it back to a three point game? It. He can. Important shot by Brandon Barrett from a penalty. Long ball dropping in here. It's still there, but Bally Duff come Dylan away Moriarty. with it. Dylan Moriarty has it in his hand, and the referee blows the whistle. Bally Duff booked their place more or less in the quarterfinals of the Kerry County Championship with that victory. It's two from two for the men from Ballyduff. I suppose the best game of the championship at the uh, weekend so far was the game between Ballyduff and Causeway. Uh, 217 to 117, I think it was. 2-9 to 9 points at half time, John. And uh, Causeway are like a mash unit. They're, they're, there's nothing left. Uh, uh, John Mike was on the bench the last night. Geraldine came on. Uh, but of course they were out Gavin Dooley as well as the earlier ones that they were missing out on so they're really I won't say scraping the barrel but they really are down to the down to the vamps really and uh, they're still eking out you know getting very close they're having to win they're getting very close and then the Duffers go from playing very well like they did in the first half then allowing a team back into it and getting over the line but you'd have to say the Goulding brothers were outstanding what was your reading of that game? Um, a little bit like the first weekend, um, like you say with Bally Duff, as they did against Ardfert in the first match, started off really well, as if they were going to burn the opposition apart, then went through a big lull, then ended up only leading by a point or two coming down the stretch and having to eke it out. But of course, winning games like that probably gives you more self-belief and more self-confidence than if they had won by 10 or 12 points. And then you look at Causeway, who are like St. Brendan's, who we'll be discussing in the next game. They both have lost two matches. But they won't be in any way, I would think, demoralised or disillusioned because there were signs in both uh, matches from both teams that they can still have a huge impact in the championship when it gets to the knockout stages. Obviously, they're down a few bodies at the moment and they lost Kieran Leahy as early as the 12th minute on uh, Saturday. And to play with 14 men and still run bellied off to three points over the next 50-something minutes of championship hurling will do them the power of good I feel like we know what Stephen Goggin is like um, we know that if they could uh, get through the next couple of weeks and get Gavin Dooley back and uh, you know Colm Harty got a couple of scores the last night Brandon Barrett was good on the free take and Dan Goggin again three points from play to add to the five points from the previous weekend Billy Lyons getting the goal Keith Carmody excellent yeah Keith Carmody you know Causeway still have Evan Murphy super Causeway still have pivotal players as James said in pivotal positions throughout the team they have the experience of being champions two years ago they're not going anywhere they're going to be a threat mm -hmm. to anyone but Bally Duff are learning as James says they have a lot of young players coming through the system you had Luke Rochford young Luke getting his first senior championship goal the last night uh, what will that do for him going forward Jack Goulding of course is a huge asset um, I think he's one goal and 13 points in two games now um, Go, important goal the last day um, Evan Boyle will improve as it goes along because you can see that there is 
raw potential there. He does have the attributes. And like obviously that's all without Podge and Mikey. And they will they will they, you can be damn sure they will be back when it comes to the knockout stages. Uh, whether they've only one leg working or both legs working, they'll be there, they'll be togged out yeah. and they'll be ready. So um yeah, great game, great championship game, and both sides will be moving forward uh, contented enough. Yeah, if you had to yeah, Mikey will play later on, I'm sure. Podge should probably be back as well, uh, even if they have to get mopeds to bring him up and down the pitch <laughs> or hire a taxi or something. But they're going to be, because, uh, you know, a boy at one stage the last night, only Killian came on. And if Evan had been taken off, uh, we would have had a belly duff team without a boil. And the last time that happened was probably between the two wars. <laughs> yeah, it's a long, long time. James, you weren't even long, born when that happened, time. yeah? And you're an old fella. Now, uh, James... Uh, Talk to me because, again, as a defender, although you were never a sweeper because you weren't quick no, enough. No, no, no. Um, we didn't have sweepers, Mark. We didn't have sweepers. No, you did. You we had a bush at home. <laughs> Your wife made you <laughs> sweep up after. The <laughs> yeah, but talking about Kevin Goulding, I thought in the absence of both Mikey and Podge, you always look up for leaders. And I could hear him from the press box shouting at the lads, telling them where to go, get them into position. And then when the going got tough, He's able to clear his lines. He reads the game and he adds three points. He's really he a forward. Was. I thought he had a massive game the last night, Kevin massive. Goulding. He was, he was excellent, though, in fairness. He was, really was good. And his three points were Phenom Max esque. He, he, he got his own half back line on the run from midfield, straight over there. It wasn't even a, a toss, second toss, bang. He never even looked straight yeah. over. Brilliant hurler. Brilliant hurler. What I do worry about Bad Luff is they need Mikey and Pods to give them structure. They yeah. lose all structure at times. Mm -hmm. yes. You got. Jack falling back, you have Dylan Moriarty falling back, you already have Kevin Goulden in the, in, the, in the slot as a sweeper, so suddenly they've no focal point. Mm. Yeah. That's where they lose all their, like you talked about it earlier, Dowdy, about the shape. That's where they lose, that's where Podge will sit. Podge won't move from that square. You sit Podge in there, or you sit Mikey in at six. I won't, don't think they'll sit Mikey in at six anymore now. No. They don't have to. They could sit Mikey now at centre forward and sit Podge at full forward. Yeah. Then they're extremely dangerous. Absolutely. Then they're extremely, extremely dangerous. Because yeah. then you have Jack Gould and all of a sudden he's got a free role. At the minute he's playing a centre forward role, having to maybe hold that position yeah. as well without giving the centre back too many options in the following in the opposite team. But you put those two pivots in there, they're gonna be really strong. It's gonna be really hard to see them beaten like. But you can see a little bit of rawness. A little bit of rawness yeah. on the edges. Yeah. But there's there's class there. And yeah. Jack, Jack, I put him up there with you talk about Jordan Conway, you talk about Massey Connor, he's in that bracket. He right. really is in that he's bracket. Yeah, he's yeah. top class. He might miss six, but he'll get seven. <laughs> That's mm, what he's yeah, like. Yeah. He will, he'll try and shoot the lights out. He won't care where he shoots from. And his set up for Luke Rocci's goal was brilliant. He took Absolutely. two players yeah. to the corner. Quick look, and he flashed it across straight to Lukey's hand, and Lukey took the net off. Yeah. It was a brilliant goal. And the assist the previous week for Jack O'Sullivan's oh, goal was probably the best score in the championship. Top class. He will see that. He will see. He's, well, these his guys can see is, His own goal is oh, a high ball in. Like, just kind of three cards. Like it's... Turn quick, yeah. bang, he's buried in the corner. He's, they really, those forwards, they have that. Yeah. Massey will do it. John Conway will do it. Shane Nolan's doing it. These fellas really are turning games. Yeah. They're turning games. And Barry Duff have huge tradition, haven't they? they like, that's, you, it's a we William Kilmody same tradition now as well. It helps. It, it does. does help. Mm. It, like, you can see it. Other teams straight away, they're, oh, Jesus Christ, it's Kilmody. They spell off. It's not, a, it's not an arrogance thing. Yeah. It's just you can, there. If you walk the walk, you can talk the talk. Yeah, right? yeah. So yeah. you've got to be able to do it. Like, and it's proven that's about enough. Twenty-five, we twenty-six. That's why you're up there. Yeah. Because they've done it and done it and done it, and they can yeah. keep doing it and keep producing, and they will pull it out. But yeah. we're going back to Causeway there again, Mert. Causeway, I've been so impressed with them because of what they have gone through and what they're missing, and it's unbelievable that they're still. Yeah. They brought that up to a point, to a point. It did, yeah. The last night. Yeah. And they were pushing on with 14 men, yeah. hanging on. Like just, it was just, they were sitting out on their feet. Yeah. And like Carmo was excellent. Evan Murphy, their leaders, new leaders have come true for them now. What's happened is new leaders have really come to the fore. Yeah. Evan Murphy is one of the best defenders in Kerry at the minute. Yeah. Top, absolutely top class. I put him in the same bracket as Eric Lean. I watched Eric Lean against Crotter. Eric Lean beat Shane Owen and beat John Conway. I have no doubt about it. Fellas, yeah. yeah. they want, he beat two of them. Yeah. They, they were very quiet. When Eric Lean was on two of them, he held them well. Yeah. They're two of the top defenders in Kerry at the minute. Yeah. They're brilliant, the two of them. And I so Evan really stepped up, and so did Eric Lean for, for, for St. Brendan's. They're really going to be in the mix. They really and are. God forbid if you were ever the Kerry senior hurling manager, oh. you'd have those two in, <laughs> would you? I'd be six and three. 
Okay. Stay back. Uh, Aiden, <laughs> let's come back to a little bit of uh, sanity reality. and reality. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Caldway, uh, I mean, that clearance off the line, I think it was Kyle O'Connor, the, the close in free yeah. by yeah. Um, Brandon, Brandon Barrett. Yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, so deflected maybe into the path of, of, uh, uh, off of the keeper, uh, Young Quinlan. That was a pivotal moment. That was about 41 minutes in or something, wasn't yeah. it? They you kind of forget road. sometimes like, how, how close they can get. Like, it, it's... Yeah. They just don't go away, like they do not go no. away. <laughs> Even the goal they got like was excellent as well. Keith Carmody making kind of a bit of a loop around and great run by Billy as well off the shoulder then. And Billy Dines yeah. like, you know, not exactly a forward, it's not in the blood like, but it was a great finish by him, you know. Yeah. And, and was Colin um, Hart did us in the ball in originally to, uh, into the corner? I think uh, I think it was Gary Carey, I think Mike. Maybe Carey, yeah, either way, yeah, go on. Yeah. To right, Keith right, and to uh, Keith just just got the hand pass off them. Um, but they they are still going to be very dangerous. Like you know, they're going to be going into that uh, preliminary quarter final, like and coming out of it. And they're not a team you want to be facing in quarter final because mm. hopefully for them they will be getting one of Gavin or someone back in anyway. Anthony, Anthony Feely, Feely yeah. Back they're hoping back. he's going to Joe make Mike the quarter final. Goals, so yeah. Um, yeah, they're going to be really dangerous as well. And like that, Philly Duff are only going to get stronger because the mistakes they're making, they're not probably going to make that many of them when Mikey's on the pitch because Mikey just doesn't let you make no. mistakes when he's on the pitch, you know. Yeah. If Mikey didn't catch a ball, he'd still make a massive impact just on yeah. his presence on the pitch and getting in fellas' ears and to, making sure they don't make the mistakes. On that, on Mikey, it's very noteworthy that he is now a water boy. I never thought I'd see the day that Mike would be a water boy. <laughs> you say that because, here now because he's not here. <laughs> because he's not here, yeah. The former boxing champion. I, I'm not prepared to take no, him don't on. Tell him that. No, 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 don't, don't no. Tell him. And he doesn't watch this, so we're fine. But um, Mikey was, uh, he's always back with the defence. He was mm. on this side of the pitch in Austin Stack Park and he was talking to Kevin and talking to defenders and he'd go in with water and yeah. give. So the, despite the fact that he's injured and not playing, yeah. I believe he still has an influence as uh, James does, yeah. says. Yeah. Yeah, he uh, and he has the ward in. And when he talks in the dressing room, not taking away from Barry and the lads, I'm sure he gives... Well, you've, yeah. you've, you've no choice but to listen to him really because you're, <laughs> his, 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 vo his voice has got to be probably the loudest once he does start shouting inside there. But yeah, like he's, he's a huge leader on the pitch. Yeah. Like, you know, he's probably... And uh, one of those iconic fellas like in Kerry Hurling when it comes yeah. to, to leading a team yeah. on the pitch, you know. Absolutely, yeah. So everybody enjoyed the Ballyduff uh, Causeway game. And from the panel, it seems that both Ballyduff and Causeway are heading into the quarterfinals, whether it's by the direct route or the indirect route. And uh, Aidan and Abby Dorney are waiting and wondering and not would not exactly be fancying their chances against Causeway or Ballyduff. Uh, and that comes from Aidan's mouth himself. <laughs> now, into the uh, second game on uh, Saturday night. That was Crotter, the county champions. And despite the... Crossfield ball. And it's picked up here by the number 10, Cormac White. White gives it into Jordan Conway and Conway with his first effort on goal and Jordan Conway sends oh, this oh, one oh. over the bar. What a great score. There's three or four out front men there but it is uh, Cormac White who comes away with it. Sends it inside to Declan Dunahoo. Dunahoo has plenty of pace if he, if he can get a run here. He has gotten a run on McDonough and Dara, or Declan or Dunahoo has put that over the bar. Now both sides are actually going to be delighted that I know St. Brendan's conceded score but so they made him earn it like we were saying before and no As the sharp puck out is not working out here for Crata or for, for St. Brendan should I say Crata nipping in and Tomas O'Connor has made them pay he's put it over the bar that was He has to go around the houses a small but eventually finds the number 21 Mikey Davis here goes Davis off of the run Davis strikes it and puts it over the bar. Excellent score. It's to Mikey Davis. Davis with one score already to his name. He's under pressure though. And Killian Trent turns him over. And Rory Mahoney now with the ball on the hurley. Mahoney will try to look to take on his own score. Will he? Oh, flicks it into the middle here to Killian Trent. Killian Trent puts it over the bar. And here is Killian Trent again. Trent pops a pass into the corner here to James Sheehan. Sheehan has Gary O'Reardon for company. Sheehan looking for support out and around the middle here. He'll find a pass to Jack McKenna. McKenna can't hold on to it, though. But Killian Trent is there to mop it up. Trent looks to back up his first score with another one, and he does so. Yeah, he got onto the Good Lee effort, but he should have scored. Lee Mogo Connor was coming out to put Tommaso Connor under pressure after he spilt the, the puck out initially. Great ball inside here. James Sheehan turns and sends it over the bar. Fantastic score. Yeah. Killian Trent this time. Trent looking for Adon Behan in the corner. Behan will keep it in. John Egan is there with him. A lovely ball into the middle here. Karma White with a chance here. Bit of space. White has put it over the bar. Yeah, he made some ends for the line. 
Killian Trent with a bit of space here. He'll look for a pass inside. It's Aidan Behan. And Behan has put this over the bar. And I just don't think Artford knows. And it's another chance kind of bigging. Here's Aidan Behan again. He's causing all sorts of problems for Artford. Behan going through here for Crotty. He has open road in front of him now. Does Aidan Behan. Chance for the goal maybe. Behan. Oh, <laughs> he's giving a free out, says the referee. Over carrying. And Conway in a bit of space. But it's actually Shane Nolan who's going to come there first. Nolan has a look and has support in the middle. Does give it to Dara Dunahu. Dunahu has all the space and time in the world, and Dunahu will put it over the bar. He's lucky he put that one over because he passed. So he's now marking him. Aidan Behan. Great ball. Uh, great ball. But again, just not into the hand. This time, Fanon does have it. Didn't get it the first time. Got it the second time and sends it between the posts. And that is a very, very for young Gary O'Reardon. Long ball sent forward. Fanon Egan is under it, as is Lee Moog O'Connor. Two very young players as well up there, leading the line, and Lee Moog turns it over. Has the support off the shoulder of Fanon Egan. Egan, this will be huge if it can just creep in over the bar. It will creep in over the bar. Dahi Griffin. Dahi has moved off Jordan and has moved up the field. Good ball in here to Fanon Egan. Can't get it into the hand that time. Maybe the greasy condition's telling. Tomas O'Connor. Can't deal with him. Fanon has it in the hand. He'll look across the field here. Bit of space. Great ball. Aynon Ferris has it first time. Ferris to Lee Mogo Connor. Lee Mogo Connor! What a finish! A huge by Darrow Dunahoo, and it's going to be picked up here by who else but Rory Matney. Sweeping away again. Rory gives a bit of a dummy and bounces it off the ground. Still going, Rory Matney. This will be an, ins an incredible score if he can put it over. And yeah, he has to. That's one for a the fantastic highlight reel from score. St. Brendan versus Trotter Neal. Fantastic. Rory Manny. Absolutely. And Trent who mops it up. Trent sending it forward. Aidan Behan is all on his own here. Behan will have a look at the post here. Off his left. Aidan Behan this time has yeah. found the target. Yeah, and I'm not sure. They turn St. Brendan's over. But here is Shawnee Brosnan. Brosnan didn't start. Came on as a sub in the first half. His effort is going to go over the bar. And that's huge for his confidence. Yeah, just going to. Off the shoulder. And that is Shawnee Brosnan again. Gives it to Lee Mogo O'Connor. O'Connor with a shovel pass into the middle here now. And it's Gary O'Reardon. Reardon will look to put this over the bar. And it's back to a two-point game. And you can hear him. across there. Lovely tap down there to Gary Reardon. Reardon with a bit of space and time. Takes the one-two. Reardon will go for the shot. Gary Reardon yeah. has put it over the bar for his second of the match. It has a runner in front of him. It is... Declan O'Dunhu, but Trent goes himself. This time gives it to Declan. Declan has a bit of space there. That's fantastic by Dahi Griffin. It's back to Trent, though. Trent will look for a bit of space. Gives it to Shawnee McKelligot. McKelligot, well able to pick up a score, and he has. Yeah, great score by McKelligot. Anthony John Egan plays it into the middle here to his son, Fanon. Fanon, with a long-range effort, is yeah. going over the bar. Tried to bat it on the ground. Keeps it going. He gets outnumbered eventually. Still going in there. The two McKenna brothers force the turnover. And now it's with Gavin Parker. Parker, two added minutes on the board here. Parker with a shot. That has gone over the bar. Oh, great. This game, this puck out is taken by Anon Ferris. He can't catch it again, though. Oh, lovely hand pass inside. Fanon Egan gives the 1-2. Anon Ferris, what a chance this is for a goal. And he's going to give a penalty, penalty says the referee. Well, we are going to have some late drama here after all. Minutes of the original two. Egan! Oh, oh it's a great save by Adam O'Sullivan. Unbelievable save. Fantastic save. But um, they, they can take a lot out of these opening two games. Yeah, they can, of course. Look, um, halfway through the first half last week, you would have really worried about Now, Crot O'Neill's, as I was saying, not 19 and St. Brendan's won 12. Um, this was a tight game. There was a penalty save. You'd say Nolan limping off at some stage, whether it was precautionary or whatever. And um, as James was saying earlier, you had the likes of Eric Re Lean and uh, Dahi Griffin playing so well at the back. Lee Moog, Connor getting a point, coming of age. And uh, Fanon Egan showing that he's still, you know, this young gun coming up and the dad. And I suppose the other thing we've got to discuss on that game, and maybe we come to James again, uh, as he has eight county championship medals, we'll discuss that with him, <laughs> is the fact that Aidan <laughs> Behan, yeah, well, he should have nine and ten, but the ones he lost, we're not going to mention. But um, we had a kind of a, a plan by Crotto Neils mm. to limit John Egan, and they put the corner back, Aidan Behan up there, and he was very successful. He curbed John Egan and he got a few points. But we'll talk first maybe about the game itself, John, 
Crossa uh, winning it, but at one stage it was down to a point. So this, as we were talking about the earlier game, this wasn't a given either for Crossa. Yeah, the group has been, uh, I suppose everyone said at the start, this four-team group was full of four really strong teams. And it's proved to be the case, even though two sides have two wins and the other two teams have two losses. But like, just like Causeway, St. Brendan's will be going into the prim- preliminary quarter final fairly satisfied with how they're playing because the biggest thing for them is they're trying to learn basically to play without Finan Mackesy, like who's their talisman and has been for several seasons. Like he was going to be like he was going to be a gigantic loss to any club, but he played such a huge role for the Ard Fert side that um, he's badly missed. And like you say, they're they're having to live without him and try and develop without him. They have young players. They've players taken leadership as well, like as you'd expect from the likes of Eric Lean and from Dahi Griffin. And then you have young Fanon Egan up front who's got 18 points in two games. Maybe that is a little worry for St. Brendan's. They are a bit too um, dependent on Fanon Egan at the moment. 10 points the first game, 8 points the last game. Another young player, Lee Mogo O'Connor, obviously got a goal the last day. Uh, and another young lad in Gary O'Reardon, who we know from the football, Mart. Yeah. A great bit of stuff, a great lad, a character. Two fine points as well. The last day he's developing, he's no fear. Yeah, his so, late grandfather um, be so proud of him. Wouldn't yeah, he? He like just passed on during the year. Yeah, for Crotted in. On the other hand, like they're they're missing they're missing some bodies at the moment. You know, obviously mm-hmm. Barry Mahoney's over in America. He's not going to be there for the championship. But they're down a few other players. They lost Shane Nolan. Sean, but Sean McGrath down. Sean McGrath, yeah. massive loss at this moment in time. Huge loss. Um, obviously the man of the match in the county league final against Kilmiley he's an outstanding player for them but then you look at it they had 11 different scorers the last day which will please them a lot Shane Nolan just got his three frees before he went off injured they got 16 points apart from Shane Nolan and like Killian Trant is a player I think we have to mention um, a and big, Tomas uh, yeah uh, Killian yeah. Trant in particular like a big loss to the Kerry Senior Hurling team this year he's another player who you, who, who whoever the new Kerry manager is has to be looking to get him back for next season. He got three, three he points, three <laughs> points uh, from play. Um, I think the result went as, as, as expected, possibly like the Ballyduff Causeway game. But again, the losers will be heartened by the way that they're playing. James, uh, talking, was it a case that Crotter lost their shape or lost something during the game or St. Brendan's put it up to him? Dan Deneen came on. Mikey Davis, sir, that you, yeah. uh, he really added pace when he started to run at them. Lee Moog, uh, was it, were, were they cut or were, was it just a case of um, St. Brendan's putting it up to them? I think St. Brendan's, they made a few changes. Des, uh, Darren Dean came in. Shawnee B came in as well. Shawnee Boston mm. got a great score after coming in. Mikey Davis, was, was he trying to follow Killian Trent? Maybe a little bit, trying to add that role he was doing. Gwyn Crotter went man for man. That caused huge trouble for St. Brendan's. Yeah, Adam being moved up on yeah, John Egan. He moved on, and what yeah. he did was he kind of stepped off John Egan. He didn't. Yeah. He kind of tried to play him as a mm. marker. Yeah. And then he stepped off and got two points. So he got a wonder point over the sideline. And then he got yeah. another one shortly afterwards. He, he might have taken John's maybe concentration off what he was trying to do and set up the play for St. Yeah, Brendan's yeah. a little bit. I said, geez, I've got to watch this fella now as well, which yeah, he yeah. thought he wouldn't have to. But then again, conversely, what he did to the other side, Rory Mahoney was obviously marked as well. St. Yeah. Brendan's did that. They brought a marker to Rory Mahoney, yeah. which I think every other team has to do now. Mm. Yeah. Every other team has to mark Rory Mahoney and they have to mark Kevin Goulding, we talked about earlier. Yeah. These and Colin know, Walsh. Yeah. These fellas know how to be marked. Yeah. So you either get a plan for them or you put a marker on them, which yeah. is like Quattis said, right, we're putting our cornerback down John Egan. Why not sit him down there? He'll do a job yeah. now. Yeah. He's a marker, he's a cornerback, he's a marker. Just go mark John Egan. Curve his influence. Stop him coming out. But they were a bit short up front. I, I need to see more from... Nathan Driscoll, Lee Moog. I think there's two top class hurlers there. I saw it in the first game, yeah. and I think they are top class hurlers. I wish I could see more from them. Get Shawnee B on as well. Take, as you said, take the pressure off your non. But I think Lee Moog is just out of he's, school. He's, if he's, he's, he's still in school, I he's, think. Th- there's more in him. Yeah. He played a game against Gally Haig, or Bappa Haig, excuse me, but enough early in the country league. I think he got seven or eight points in play. Yeah. It's there. It's there in him. He's, he's a very good forward. They need those fellas firing. His dad was a good hurler, wasn't he? Excellent. Very good. Yeah. Like you're going to have, they're going to, if they get Nemo, they get Iran Ferris, yeah. Fernand Egan, they get Shawnee B, and they get probably Nathan Driscoll. Like, that's, that's five or six good farmers there. Yeah. And they have like Mikey Davis thrown into the mix there. They have good backs, they have Dahi, they have Dazzler, they have John Egan, Eric Lean, who I think is one of the top defenders in the county. And young. Uh, and young Gary O'Reardon. Yeah. yeah. Like there's, there's a base of a good team there. 
Yeah. Fanon yeah. was missing as well. Like, Fanon was a loss as well. Like, you know, against... like, he played a huge part in the first game against Ballyloff. That's and then right, he was yeah. missing the last day. Like, it was, it was definitely a huge loss for him. So he'd be in full back. He could, he could, he could spare Eric then if he goes full back and does the role of full back. Fanon Hagen. Yeah, we'd have him Fanon Hagen, not Fanon McAfee. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They're going to be thereabouts. It just depends on the draw. Like Ian said, the draw. The draw could tell a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Aidan is now James has spoken about him already, and if he was the manager to carry team, which by the way he won't be, uh, <laughs> no, views just in news. case. Uh, <laughs> broke new smear there. <laughs> I know, who, I know who the manager is, but I can't, uh, I can't uh, um, disclose yet. Uh, but the biro uh, is a clue. Um, it's cryptic. You wouldn't know, lads. No. Aiden, um, tell me this: Is Eric Lean the best man marker in the county? I actually think he does. If you went for a drink of water on the sideline, he'd go for you. If you went to the, go with you, if you went to the toilet, he'd go with you. Wherever you go, Eric will go. He, uh, and that's then what he was doing. Like he was following Shane out oh, every time for Shane the was free. So he was following yeah. him all the way out, probably saying a few things to him as well on the way. Yeah. Out. Like you know, he is. And then he patted him the head when he went off. And shook hands to him and said, Best See, I, think, I actually think Shane, it was actually, I think he was ill during the week. He was feeling it during the week. Yeah, so I think he was actually, he was I'd say he was just sick. I actually yes. think he was actually sick when he All was right, yeah. was More than the injury, the I'd say. It was yeah. just literally, yeah. I'd say yeah. he was ill more than anything. So that was probably the, the, the reason for the old the old high five as well, like when, when he was going off. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, he is, Eric is, is brilliant. He's he's the, the rock of that defence for Artfort and like that captain as well, like, you know, and he he's a, a real leader for them. And, um, yeah, hopefully we, we see him a few more times like that. Uh, hopefully he's going to be marking Dan Goggin as well there now and Abby Dorney on, on, on Friday. We'll get a, a nice, old, nice old battle there as well. Like, you know, because it is, it, the, those one on one battles are, are kind of the main talking points out of all these games we've had in the group stages. Like, they, we, top we've, forward, we've top seen defender, some yeah. Very yeah. good battles between, between forwards and, and, and backs. How would you, because I know as an Abby Dorney man and looking out at that, first, when you look out your window, I don't know, guys. Do you yeah, think that there is more? Uh, it, that there's more in December and inside, as John was saying, that despite the fact of the two losses, that they have the potential. The more games they play, the better they will be. And if they can get Finan Hagen back with what they have at the moment, and as James said, if Liam Oog and Nathan and these boys can step up, I had no idea why Shawnee B didn't start. I'd have him on every team. Yeah. He was on the carry scene yeah. a panel this it's, year. It was a shot in the air, maybe he might have needed it. Like he came on yeah. and made an instant impact it as is. well. Where he came the back side, Jimmy? Maybe. Yeah, it was it was yeah like it, it was very quick the first day like he came on straight away he was raring to go and, yeah. and got a score as well which was huge for them yeah like the only thing is with with a young team like that there's a bit of um, two or three fellas playing well one day two or three fellas not those two or three fellas playing well the next day yeah. the other two or three not Happens, yeah. you know that that's yeah. probably the way it is and like that it could take them another couple of years to to, to get that that well of experience up uh, and but I think they're they'll be fairly happy. Like like that, the start of the year, there was you know there was probably a bit of despair over obviously losing for all and everything like that and going into what they thought was going to be a really hard year. But um, they should be very positive with, with with those two games anyway. And um, no matter where they finish up in the championship, like I, I don't think it's all doom and gloom for them. So that's the action on Saturday night. It was quite exciting, good games, and nobody's writing off either Crata, St Brendan's, uh, or uh, Ballyduff. Our cause we either that group A was called the group of death, it could well be the group of success. Into the Tralee, Parnell's forward line has been intercepted well by Abby Dorney and they launch a long clearance in towards the full back and the full forward. Dara Keane went up high, the ball breaks, it's a chance of a score now for Abby Dorney. That was him. Uh, he's in the veteran category. He is the cornerback now. Mikey, Mikey Clifford. Clifford. Mikey's going to try for a shot himself, is he? From all of 50 metres out. Yeah. That's great. There and Oh, uh, great take there, Mark, by Abby Dorney. And laid off to Michael O'Leary. O'Leary could have shot for the post himself. He's passed it off. Very unselfish by Michael O'Leary. By Abby Dorney. I think is it, is it uh, Jed Mansell again there. Playing very well at the back so far. Parnell's get it back though. Is this the chance for the first score of the game? I think it is. And it's set. Look out. The strategy for Trilly Parnells. They're in towards Michael O'Leary now. Great battle oh, with Ty Brick. How ball. did O'Leary get that into his grasp? He's not going to miss that. That's a one. And here for. We'll carry on with the play. That's good work now by Callum O'Sullivan. The centre half forward. Can he get a score for Abby Dorney? That's oh, a beautiful point. effort. An excellent score. Time here with this move. In towards Michael O'Leary. It'll go over his head. Oshin Mansell is there on the burst. 
takes off. This is wonderful from Mansell. Goes for goal. Good save by Pip Gilsonen. Mansell save Shane by well. Pip. Pip Gilsonen. Good clearance to Dara Maloney. Dara Maloney lays it off. Chance for a score. John Sherman, the man from Leash. This would be a super score. I think he's got it too, John. Tralee Parnell's four points. Long puck out in towards David Egan. Egan, he's going to get away this time from Rory Rean. Can he get his first score? David Egan, from a tight angle, I think he can. As we... we Move and on. the slitter's thrown in by the referee Chris McGuire second half is on Abby Dorney straight away on the attack and a chance of a score almost immediately from the throw-in and a great score this line has immediately gone to 12 they are totally dominant now here goes Daniel O'Leary up the right hand side of the field O'Leary in towards the keeper is that drifted just over Abby Dorney Oshin Mansell now Mansell low ball in towards David Egan they're trying to find Egan a lot more he's a lot more prominent in this half than he was in the first half even though he did get a score before half time this is Egan again <laughs> this is a great score no no they show no mercy I know I live outside among them and you'll be looking to get your lunch or one of them uh, stealing a piece of chicken or a few spuds ah here's Michael O'Leary again picked up the layoff from brother Rory Hennepin who's quite a useful player footballer and hurler and of course, Tomas is the offered officer, Kurt Tour. Now, Washington O'Brien, can he get the first score of the second half for Parnells? And don't know what Abby Dorney have done. Just Good pass by Jack Sheehan. In comes one of the substitutes, lays it off to Oshin Mansell. Oshin Mansell in, chance of a goal. It is a goal. It's put into the back of the net. Great goal. I think Oshin Mansell set it up. The is number the 23, game, the substitute, was also involved. Mansell with the assist. And it's, it's the number 13. David it's actually... Egan. David Egan. No, he's not. Ball. They haven't taken their foot off the gas at one end as well. Here's Jack Hannon. Jack Hannon will get away from Rory Reen on this occasion. Jack could get a score here. He's only been on the pitch a matter of minutes. And that's put... Oh, Barry lays it off to Shane Healy. The bearded wonder. Nearly got a goal last week against Slicks. Nah, he's on the burst himself. This would be a lovely score. This would be a great individual point. That's one of the best scores of the game. It's over. But that's easy for Stephen Egan, who's been very assured at full back today. He looks like he will only get stronger as the competition goes on. That's James O'Connor. Will the captain get on with the quality of the opposition? But that Abbey Dorney defence has been very sharp. Another man very sharp is Brendan O'Leary. That's great hand, great stick work, and a great score. That's the ref doesn't even... Well, he did. He, I suppose he did play that second 62, minute. Just did, about yeah. exactly on the dot. Chris Maguire blows the final whistle. The final score here is Abby Dorney, 127. That's 30 points. Tralee Parnell's 8 points. A 22-point victory for the pre-match favourites. Now, our final game of the weekend, obviously, was on Sunday evening. This was the Group 2 game between Tralee Parnells, who were last year's County Intermediate Champions. They had done reasonably well, running Lickstad to two points. But they came up against uh, an Abidorni side, who have been disappointing over the last couple of years, despite the fact they've been winning County Leagues. But they haven't done as well in the Championship as they should have. Obviously, it's 50 years since they won it which is a long time. They're catching up to me in age. And um, they were too strong, though. Abby Dorney, Michael O'Leary, before he was taken off, you know, just hitting points from all directions. Uh, way too strong. 127 to 8 points of the final score. And John, uh, um, actually, I start with Aidan this time because Aidan is his uh, Abby Dorney is his club. And I'm sure he'll want to talk them up. Um, Aidan... I suppose they did what was expected of them and they gave young fellas in the second half a run out and some of those young fellas, Jack Hannon and, and Parker and these guys, you know, they all showed that if they're required, they can play as well. Yeah, like it was it was routine, which is what we would have been hoping for and probably expecting as well. Like, you know, in fairness, David Orney, like that, it's an easy stick to beat uh, the club with that. Obviously, it's been a long time since there's been any real success. Um, but you're always expecting them to be on another level to to the likes of Parnells there now the last day, which they are. Like there, there's a fine fine squad starting to come together there, and um, good mix of young fellas and experience. Like look at the likes of Kieran Deneen there as well playing for Abbey Dorney. It's like he it's better he's getting with age, you know. And James O'Connor as well getting a point, like real leader for him as well. Um, yeah, it, it was what was uh, expected of, of Abbey Dorney. It's not often you'd I'd say you'd have to go scoring back to find if they've scored. 127 in a championship game inside in town. Um, I'd say it's been a good while anyway if they, 
if they have done it. Um, so it was it was good to see them just you know stretching the legs and you know it was kind of target practice I suppose for for a bit, um, which is probably something they'll want to be. Probably the biggest thing they'll take away is to sharpen up and shoot like that. Yeah, James, it was a. Uh... It was the most one-sided game so far in the championship, and we can't, we're not going to be hard and parallels over that. But it's just they're coming in to a level now where they're meeting teams who are uh, vastly experienced at senior championship grade players like Brendan O'Leary came on played well, and the O'Leary brothers, and you have you know as 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 uh, uh, you know uh, James O'Connor who'd been in with Kerry and Dolan. I mean you know Jack Sheehan. They have a lot of very good players. Abby Dorney. So. It, the result, I don't think we should worry about the margin. Overall, number one, were you impressed with Abby Dorney? And where do three panels go from here? I know they were pulling me around. Uh, three panels, it's just learning on the job, I'm afraid. Yeah. You are going to expect this for a couple of years. Don't take the easy route now and say, we're not able for this, let's go to intermediate. Don't take that route. Coach yeah. the same, don't go that way. Yeah. Stick at it. There's good young lads there. They have all our little failing winners coming through. Give them time. Yeah, they're good Give minors coming through. They're yeah. good minors coming Give them time. Like the, we even spoke about a couple of weeks ago, maybe they're ahead of schedule where they should be. They mm. are a little bit. Mm. Parallels are a little bit. Yeah. Like there's good lads there. There's even lads. They have given, they've had four or five lads in the carry panel last year or year before. Yeah. So like they're there about. You've yeah. got to stick at it. And you've got to really have faith. Don't, you'll take these beatings. You will take these beatings. Mm -hmm. But just stick at it. As for Abidorni, we said about hiding in the long grass. I don't think they are. Everybody knows they're dangerous. They had a very good county league campaign. Yeah. Only beaten the semi-final by Kilmiley by a point. So they could have been sliding doors moment they could have been in the final against Crotty we spoke about that already yeah. that I said to me I said to Aidan earlier would they show up? no problem against Crotty I think yeah. they would <laughs> have a record against Crotty and they know it <laughs> they know it and Crotty know it and Abidori know it they both know it so if that comes about in the championship this year somehow that'll be a clinker but yeah. I think they'll be very dangerous whoever meets them they'll be very very dangerous because yeah. they pace and they power a combination and they've no little hurling either yeah. so the, I know we didn't we, didn't talk, we won't call them dark horses or anything like that, yeah. but they're going to be dangerous. Yeah. They so are going to be dangerous. So your two favourite pairings going on in the Championship would be Abidoni versus Crotter, oh, yeah. right? We want to see that. We want to see that, and we want to see Kilmoyle and Belly Hike. Again. 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 <laughs> yeah. Revenge okay. mission. <laughs> yes. That's coach final, so is it? <laughs> County semi final, yeah. Right, sir. Right. John, um, talking about, yeah, as he said, look, the lads that are away for Parnells are not helping them. Yeah. They're not at full strength even. Now they still, I don't think, would be beating Abby Dorney. What did you think of Abby Dorney quickly? Um, just what I expected of them. Like, uh, they're definitely not dark horses. They're genuine contenders. Uh, all through the team, there is a serious spy in there. If you go from Stephen Egan and Kieran Deneen inside to Ronan Donovan, James O'Connor outside, through midfield with Oshin Mansell, uh, Niall O'Mahony, Daniel O'Leary all around there. And some of their good forwards really stepped up the last night as well. Not just Michael O'Leary, but yeah. Jack Sheehan was dangerous. So was young Callum O'Sullivan. I think he's only 19. And David Egan, uh, David Egan was dangerous. Yeah. And then the use of Brendan O'Leary could be really significant going forward. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't really say from Abby Dorney's point of view now, no matter how well he's playing coming off the bench, keep him as the impact sub because you don't want Brendan really starting and having to go off after 40 minutes or 30 minutes with his, you know, his long-standing injury issues. If you have him on the pitch for the last 20 minutes, uh, like he showed when he came on the last day, he was very dangerous. For Parnells, I think the main thing they'll take out of the game is the, is the injury worries over Oshin O'Brien and, uh, and the, the sweeper Gerardo, himself, Gerardo Doherty, because yeah. they're their two main scorers. Pip is not injured, though. <laughs> Pip was not into Did you see no. him coming out the field? He went, yeah, he was. He, <laughs> he thought he was. Burst. He went to burst the pace. <laughs> yeah. And then he needed oxygen to get <laughs> back get into back goals. In. <laughs> but um, for the preliminary quarterfinals, they'll be really dependent on uh, Gerard O'Darty and Oshin O'Brien uh, yeah. getting back. Uh, I suppose one thing we didn't really mention so far was going into these preliminary quarterfinals, and no disrespect to either Dr. Crokes or Charlie Parnells, will it be an advantage for? Causeway and St. Brendan's going forward that they'll get a fourth game yeah in fact I, I, I won't say a week off but virtually you're still tipping over you're playing a game which are not pushed to the limit yeah, yeah. A, little that bit, could, a little bit that, that, that could happen so yeah Abby Dorney the, the, the panel thinks and that's despite Aidan uh, not having an opinion on this. Uh, the panel suggests that Abby Dorney are dark horses, that they're waiting in the long grass. You'd want the grass very long now to hide <laughs> Brendan O'Leary, <laughs> wouldn't you, the whole lot of them. By the way, I want to apologise. I want to apologise to the boys and Aina. I said 
But that dad passed this year. He actually passed last September. Uh, I just uh, realised that after I had said it. But uh, yeah, a huge loss to that family. And it's lovely to see the lads back playing hurling again. Now we're going to move to the preview of this weekend's game. And we'll just go through uh, the games in the order that they've been played. And John, I'll just go to you for the first one. I won't ask James. Obviously, we put this game in uh, context. It's now changed to Thursday night in uh, uh, Lewis Road at uh, 7.30. Uh, and it's the Group 3 game between uh, Kilmoyley and Dr. Croaks. Uh, Kilmoyley need to win it, obviously, uh, to uh, go directly in uh, to um, the quarterfinals. And uh, anything other than a Kilmoyley win would be a shock. Yeah, obviously there's more important issues than hurling at the moment in the Kilmoyley and Larry areas. You know, they, they have bigger things on their mind this weekend, but it's... Uh, it's good to get the game out of the way on Thursday and leave things free for the weekend for, for the more important issues. Kilmoyley will win the game. They'll want to put in a performance. Um, they should have um, Paddy O'Connor and Daniel Collins back, you would expect, after missing the last game. Um, even though they were missing bodies against Ballyhigh, they still, Kilmoyley are never happy when they lose. John Myler is never happy when a team of no. his loses. They'll be out to put in a performance and get themselves ready for the quarterfinals. Um, they will win. They will win probably... Uh, easily and Dr. Crokes uh, will will get through the fixture and uh, be thinking of putting in their best performance of the season in the preliminaries. Yeah, and I suppose, uh, James, just briefly on that, uh, Kilmiley probably won't be at full strength uh, because of the situation. Some of the lads who went to America uh, to be with their, 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 their fallen friend um, probably won't play, but they'll still have resources enough to win this one. We, sh we should have enough. Yeah. So we will not. We won't just play it down. We, we, we should win this game. Yeah. And we want to see. Can we improve a good bit from where we were? Because yeah. Bellag performance was not at the race at all. Yeah. That was no, not where we've been for the last number of years, and nowhere near what you need to be. So I think we'll win it. But yeah. Aidan, you go along with that, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah look, I, I'd say it'll be fairly. Uh, look, Crokes playing at home as well in their own pitch. The the you know it, it's something for them. To I suppose it's a it's a it's a moment for them, you know, hosting a, a Kerry County Championship game at home as well. So yeah. there, there's that side for for Crokes, but I, I'd say Kilmiley should be like that. Kilmiley will have that bit of extra motivation too, like you know, they they'll want to do it for for John Paul as well. Right, we have two games on Friday night, and they're both obviously in Group A, our Group One, and here in the Austin Stack Park, which is immaculate as usual by Tim Daly. Fair play to him; uh, he's done a great job. Um, and he, at seven o'clock here, we've Crat O'Neill's and Bally Duff, and uh, this could be a game of a mind games where neither want to show their hand. If they have any injuries or little things, they're not going to. Although winning the group does carry a little bit of an advantage, maybe with Kilmiley coming up on the blind side as a runner-up, you might end up meeting them or whatever. Are a causeway, are a St. Brendan. So at the end, well, they couldn't meet them in the next round, obviously. So look, they could meet Abidorn, of course. So Cratton Belly Duff, how do you see that going? It might well be an appetizer to uh, a main course that will happen later on in the championship. So like you say, this mightn't be the only meeting of Ballyduff and Crotta in this year's championship if things go according to plan for both sides. And they're obviously both genuine contenders to go all the way. Like you say, it might be a bit of a phony war on Friday night, both teams through. Who will really want to top the group? Maybe, they, maybe they'll both like to put down a bit of a marker without risking any players that are doubtful at the same time. I think 50-50 on it, but I think Crotter might nick it. I think Crotter just playing at the moment. They're just playing what's in front of them with the confidence of being county champions. I don't yeah. think they're going to be kind of trying to taper their performances up, down, whatever, sideways. They're just going to try and keep consistently playing at the same level. So that might get them over the line. James, in two words, which I know is impossible for you, uh, who will win between Crotonius and Ballyduff? We call Bella. Ballyduff? God, you've changed. Uh, Aidan, <laughs> Crotta and Ballyduff. I, I, I think Crotta, just because like that, they don't want to, they don't want to get off the losing streak, or the winning streak, let's say. And... I think by sounds of Belly Off might be 
change, giving, a, giving a few fellas a run. So uh, uh, we will see, I think, Crotter was... Uh, right, so there. you want Crotter to win so he can't meet him in the quarterfinals. Yeah. They'll top the group. <laughs> that's obvious. Uh, that's, it's, it's obvious. Yeah. It's very <laughs> obvious. Now, the second game is on in Abbey Dorney, which is lovely to see Abbey Dorney. Remember yeah. back there, was it? 2014, 15, September around then. 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, Absolutely. You have a great memory for a fellow who's moving on. Uh, Causeway <laughs> and St. Brendan's, uh, James. That's going to be a good one. Like, both of them have really... They're cellar dwellers, as we call them, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, do Causeway want to push themselves in this one? I'm not sure. They've gone through two hard games down to the bare bones. They might need to rest a few lads. Yeah. And I think maybe... They, I won't say Two third and fourth, I won't matter. say concede it. Yeah. I won't say concede it. Yeah. But they might say, look, hang on. Can yeah. we go three weekends, full whack, bang, 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 yeah. and then go into a quarter, maybe a quarter final with down to Stephen maybe Goggins. less bodies. Stephen, Stephen Goggin will tug it out maybe even inside. He can say. take freeze. <laughs> yeah, of course he <laughs> can. Uh, so I, I tip St. Brendan's in that one. Right. Only for maybe cause I give me a few lads a break. Yeah, okay. Uh, what would you think, Aidan? Draw. No oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you see? The third week, and none of them have worked. You sat in the ditch at this stage. I don't know how you're surviving. Because certainly you must have a niche. Uh, Causeway and St. Brendan? I must admit, I was thinking of going for the draw as well. But as uh, soon as it, no, no, but as soon as Aidan has mentioned it, you know it's not going to be a draw. Absolutely. So St. Brendan's to nick it. And our final game of the weekend, there's only one game on on Saturday now, and that's Abby Dorney versus Lixna. Now, while we look for an opinion from uh, Aidan, he has no say in this one, and he doesn't count. Uh, John, uh, Abby Dorney, and Lixna. This is for the top of the table. Um, Abby Dorney don't like anyone. Sorry, they don't like Lixna, and Lixna have a lot of injuries. Could we, sh- we hardly see Shane Conway back in this one? I don't no. think so, or, nor Conor O'Keefe either from, from uh, talking to Conor the day of the Tralee Parnells game. They were, going, they, were, they were going to give it another couple of weeks, and... Uh, with this situation, I don't think they'll risk either uh, this weekend. This could be the game of, of the weekend. Uh, it should be a really interesting encounter. Lixna might have won their first game, but they certainly weren't happy with their performance. And you'd have to say that if it wasn't for the introduction of um, Kelton Malloy and Jamie Galvin, who came up with vital scores down yeah. the stretch, they might not have won at all. So I think it's really important, whether they win, lose or draw this weekend, that Lixna put in a much better, improved performance. At the same time... I'd fancy Abby Dorney to win. Yeah. I think they're in a better place than Lixna right now at this moment in time. Might be different when Shane Conway's back, um, but I'd fancy Abby Dorney to win. Yeah, James, did you go along with Abby Dorney? I go, go along with that. Uh, Shane Conway and Lixna are a different animal. Yeah. A different animal altogether. The game changes, the whole system they play changes yeah. around one man. I know it's, it's unbelievable to say, but he's that good and he's that influential and the way he plays and the way they structure their team around him. I think Abby Dorney will have too much. It'll still be tight. Licks now will show a bit better. They will show a bit better. They will improve. And maybe it might suit them to be just be beaten that way and get into pre- preliminary match again. Like, you know, they will come again. Yeah. They'll be, they're mm-hmm. always, always there. That's I'm always in the top four teams. They're always there. Kilmiley are always there. Belloff are always there. Licks now are always there. They will be there. If they yeah. get Shane back in some shape, and I just say Conor O'Keefe, in some shape, the spine is back in there again. Yeah. And they'll be dangerous. Yeah. But I think this weekend, I mean, they're going to be too strong and yeah. Yeah. they'll move on. They, they need to win it really, Abbey Dorney. I think it's it, their their games. Nobody needs to start winning because, from my memory, I'd say we've two wins against Six Dan probably twenty years inside in town, and we've played a fair few times yeah. in that in that yeah. time period. So there are things that Abbey Dorney need to start changing. You know, around yeah. about from trying to bridge a gap of fifty years, like games like that, they need to be beaten Six Dan. Yeah, very good. It seems Abbey Dorney gets the universal course of uh, of the three three lads. Um, on that one, so let's hope that that game ends up as exciting as it's supposed to be. Now, on record quick time, we got that review and preview done, uh, which is a credit to myself, obviously. And <laughs> only. Uh, only, and, and I don't mind the panellists. They, they rambled on, but I kept it kind of brief. Now, just to remind you that uh, the weekend's games, obviously, are going to be covered on Clover Live. 
So if you want to get that annual pass, you st better get it because we're entering the following week, the preliminary quarterfinals, and then we're entering the real knockout stuff, quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals by the first weekend in August. We're out of here and we're on to football. So get that annual pass or get the weekend or get the, the games. Uh, wherever you are, you can see them around the world. And as I said, you can play them back if you can't watch them at a particular time with the Euros and everything else on. Um, so this weekend, obviously, we're going. Uh, we're not having a game on Sunday because of the Kerry team being uh, playing Derry in Crow Park, and we wish Jack O'Connor and his troops all the best as well. So that's it from now. Thanks to John O'Dowd, to James McCarthy, the Wild Colonial boy, and uh, to Aidan Leahy, um, to John C. O'Shea, who was our producer um, and uh, operates the camera and keeps me in check. Um, despite the fact that uh, punctuation uh, and being <laughs> punctual and traffic. Uh, and traffic, he doesn't understand. Uh, so that's it uh, for now. We'll be back with the games over the next three or four days. And we'll see you again uh, next week. Bye for now.